Hey everybody, my name is Kevin and welcome to Kev's Vibe of the Day. Um, let's get right to the cards because they're good ones. Let's see. So I did a shuffle today, this morning, and um, right after my meditation. Um, <laughs> and this, Courage and Bravery, when I first shuffle and put the cards back together with my intention that whatever message comes from this tool will be for the highest good of everybody. Um, so normally the one that's closest to my heart is the one that I open up with and, and start with. So initially I had seen the courage and bravery before I was ready to reveal it. So I put it back in the deck and shuffled through again. Um, <laughs> uh, and then did my, you know, intentional prayer and then opened up and here she comes again. So um, the Courage and Bravery card was intentional and Spirit is coming forward with that message, which is, at times, our inner resolve is pushed. Our need to say something, speak up, defend ourselves, is pushed especially right now this is a card that says you have in your arsenal you have available to you the spirit world especially if you're on this video and you're tracking this progress you've got available to you a power that comes directly from source energy, from the universe, from God, if you tap into it. The next card, take a step back, is an ideal companion to the courage and bravery, although it may seem that they are counterintuitive. Courage and bravery isn't about being emotionless, or even fearless. Fearlessness means no matter what's thrown at me, I can handle it because I've handled it before. You can still have courage and bravery with your truth and your emotions if you're feeling inside that something is not right and you feel that you're being pushed or you feel that you're being influenced or more importantly, you feel either manipulated or there's a danger that you could yourself be buying into your own egoic ability to manipulate others. Take a step back and review the situation. Taking a step back is also saying that what is for your benefit, what is for your highest good, what is part of your desires, will still be there for you later. It'll still be there up ahead. So even though you may feel like I've got to make it happen, force it to happen, push it to happen, but the players or the situation or the components of what you need to happen aren't in place, don't rush forward. Everything that's for our highest good is always going to be for our highest good. It's destined to be that way. And remember that in the spirit world, there is no clock time. Everything sort of runs together, which is why there's a constant reminder, a daily reminder, sometimes multiple times a day, to stay in that connection, a constant reminder that we are plugged in, tapped in, turned on, switched on, and we have that live wire, current, direct current to source energy. The Courage and Bravery is a card that says, even though you step back, even though you take a break, even though you don't respond when other people are getting chaotic, the courage and the bravery 
is to stay centred in your truth, to stay guarded in what you believe to be true, even if it is counter, productive, intuitive or against what someone else says. I work with the public and a lot of clients who I truly love. Um, and there are times when what's being told to me, shared with me, presented to me, seems to come across as being um, opinionated. I was looking for a word. And I am now in the mode of being interested as a conscientious observer, not an objector. A conscientious observer, meaning I'm conscious that I'm not only observing and listening to what I'm being told, but I'm also conscious and observant of how I'm feeling about what I'm being told. This is really important. Taking a step back allows you to do it. Allows your mm, constitution, the way that you are, the way that you are as a person, the way you've always been, the way you came into this world to be, it allows your constitution to line up with your truth, to line up with your beliefs, to line up with your faith. It doesn't mean that you have to go to war with those that you love and you care about and create a challenge. But I have presented some of my own thoughts and feelings about, you know, the way I was raised was different to here. Europe is somewhat socialist. When you say the word that in this country, to some it's, it's a terrible thing. So, you know, what I'm learning from myself is, okay, those kind of terms, labels, situations, thoughts and feelings are combative. It is a big bucket and someone or other people may have an opinion about it. We've all come together collectively for something to happen. And what I'm learning about the current environment, if you're speaking of this virus or this health issue, what I see is chaos, confusion, lots of distrust, some anxiety and some anguish, some folks who just treat it like nothing in particular. I'm not of an opinion in any way or the other. Through it, I'm using my powers of being present to the right now, this minute. What can I do about this situation? And up to and including willing to serve, willing to listen, willing to hold space for whatever is here. Because what's in front of us, what's around us, what's about is all we really have control over. As opposed to stepping into an opinion, stepping into, you know, you may feel one way at nine o'clock in the morning, but something comes along two hours later that flips what you feel, flips what you think, flips how you looked at that. And the point about stake, taking a step back, just step back and observe. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you a non-conformist. Last year, I was um, bothered by this term that if we're not acting in a certain way, if we're not supporting a certain cause, if we're not protesting against a certain group, then we are complicit in the problem. In other words, somewhat passive to the passionate issue of others. 
Well, I don't know that the greatest leaders that led some of the biggest protests that moved mankind and society forward were aggressive. I don't know that the suffragettes in the 1920s were aggressive when they met in homes and houses, when they organised themselves to get a vote for women, when they decided they were going to be maybe disobedient by chaining themselves to railings outside government homes, for being a little bit of a nuisance. That is not aggressive. That's just disruptive. And sometimes there has to be some disruption in order to be heard and seen and move forward. There is a way to get the point across. There is a way to approach every situation. It doesn't necessarily have to be with violence unless that's required. Unless the only way to resolve an issue is that way. Personally, I believe that everything happens for a reason. What I know for sure, on the other side of chaos, is a sense of calm. I equate it to a thunderstorm. You've got the hotness and the heat of the day that builds and builds and builds and builds, and then the cool breezes that come as night falls. And then the earth has to shift in that vacuum of physical changes. Expansion and contraction creates an electromagnetic force field that then creates the thunder and the lightning and the changes and the newness. And it's always interesting to me that there's so much more clarity in the air, on the earth, in the trees, on the grass. The minute a thunderstorm, a rain cloud, a big storm passes, there's that feeling of calm and clarity that happens. So with this message for today, be courageous in how you feel about any conflicts that are going on. Stand in your absolute truth and by being faithful to yourself, your intuition, what you believe and what you hold firm. Take a step back, reflect on how you're presenting yourself or how you will present yourself and become the conscientious observer of your environment. Know that you've got access to a greater source of energy that created everything. All right, my friends, let's read from Melody Beatty's book. And then we will do our meditation. Let the lesson reveal itself to you. That's the message of today's um, from Melody Beatty's book. What's the lesson, I asked? If you knew what it was, you wouldn't need to learn it, he said. Often, in the midst of a lesson or experience, we tighten our minds into knots trying to figure out what we're learning, what's coming next, what's the lesson really about. But if we knew what the lesson was about, we wouldn't need to be learning it. The learning we're doing on our spiritual path is often not possible from our heads or books. It's a process of discovery. It includes many twists and turns, surprises and upsets, much confusion, wondering and stumbling until we reach a moment of clarity. To learn the lesson, we need to go through the experience. And usually, we learn the best when we're a bit vulnerable and uncertain about what we're learning. Trust that the lesson will reveal itself to you when it's time. Stay present for the moment and let your experiences and guidance unfold. 
You're evolving and you're learning and you're growing right now. When the transformation is complete, you'll see what you've learned. Other people may be here to help you, teach you and guide you on your path. But the lesson will be learned is always ours. The lesson to be learned is always ours. I've always believed that the teacher and the student are as one. When the teacher shows up into a physical classroom with the student, the student actually becomes the teacher of the teacher. If the teacher truly is learning how to deliver the lesson, to teach the lesson, to, to present the subject, they'll learn intuitively the energy and the essence of the class of people and the two forces will line themselves up and when the teacher is open to learning while they teach when they step into the vulnerability of I'm learning I'm, I'm presenting this and I'm learning this in a new way the student has access to learn more. The challenge we have is that in our lives, we've been taught and we rely heavily on the labels of the past. And we see teachers, leaders, is being those people who are well respected, to be listened to, to be followed, we see these leaders and teachers are people who set boundaries and precedences. Even when they go against what we believe, what we think, what we feel. More often than not, eventually we discovered, we discovered that these teachers and these leaders, lawmakers, got there. And when they got there, they felt like, well, we're here now. And it became a society of them and us. And so there comes the polarities. And after a while, the them and us void gets wider and wider. and becomes so wide that the two that were once lined up and cohesive have a hard time communicating and getting on the same page. So just like the thunderstorm, you've got heat, you've got to cool it off. And in the cooling off process comes that energetic force that pulls it all together, the chaos. So if you find yourself in chaos, my friends, choose love, not war, get to what's real. Know that when something feels off, it usually is for you. Know that no matter what, if you stay focused on the truth, if you stay brave and courageous with it, with your constitution, what you believe in, and then move forward openly with grace and gratitude, knowing that whatever happens to you is for you and will sort itself out. Time to meditate. Eyes down, eyes down, feet down, palms up, open your chest. Bring some thought to your breath. The physical mind is conditioned to thinking, 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 thinking. The idea of meditation is a challenge. The wiring of your brain is used to thinking, 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 thinking. The challenge is to let go.
Bring your mind to the soles of your feet. Press them into the floor to physically bring yourself, your awareness, your consciousness to the present moment. Scan up and down your body. And take a breath in and place it where energy may be tight. Use your focus and your mind to expand that area. And allow the expansion of your conscious thought and focus to release the trapped energy from those areas. Breathe in. Breathe out. Think of yourself as sitting in your own personal cave. And from inside this cave, the sand is nice and full. You create for yourself a comfortable seat. The firmness of the sand is pushing against your back. You can make for yourself a bolster of the sand to place behind your knees. And in your visualisation, look down at your feet. How free and open your feet are. Then look beyond your ten toes. See the edges of your cave. And see beyond the opening of the cage to the ocean. As you breathe, listen to the sound of the ocean, the roaring and the rushing, the hissing as the foam hits the beach and washes away. Allow the rhythm of the ocean coming in to follow the rhythm of your breath as you inhale. Allow the hissing of the surf sailing back out to track your exhale. Slowly allowing your mind to relax. Unattached from any other thoughts other than you in your cave of love and comfort. You focusing on the sounds of the ocean. You breathing deeply and deliberately. As you sit breathing deeply and deliberately, you start becoming one with your breath, with relaxation, You find that peace, tranquility, softness. 
unattached to any thought, situation whatsoever. And take a few moments to continue breathing in and out. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in and breathe out. And as you practice this quietness, this peacefulness, this un disturbed space. The all familiar feeling of peace, tranquility, harmony, grace, connects you directly to the base of who you are, the nucleus of who you are, your soul, at the very foundation the grounding of who you were, who you are, who you will be, is right here. This is the you without the need for doing anything. This is the you open and receptive to all that's good and abundant. This is the you totally at peace, totally in harmony, totally one with the environment around you. This is you direct extension of the created, creative force that created you. And this is you on your journey, discovering the newness of right now, the adventure of this path the unfolding of all that you are and all that you're able to be. This is you plugged in and turned on to the extension of source energy. Source energy is your powerhouse. Allow yourself to feel feel the power of what you are creating. Feel in the knowledge that you are able to create it. All that you wish to experience today will find its way to your path because you are the extension of what puts it there. You may push pause right here and continue being you in your seat, unattached.
When you're ready, bring your hands to prayer at heart centre to remind yourself. of where you are, what you're about, what you're up for. Lift your thumb knuckles to your third eye centre. Honour the valleys you bring to the world and honour the valleys the world brings to you. Together we bow and say Namaste. Hmm. meditation is a practice the idea of doing something that we feel like we're not good at is a practice and practice doesn't make it perfect because we're already perfect practice just makes it a habit and if we're all looking for calm contentedness better health better well-being then these practices make sense listen i love you have a great tuesday make it matter live with purpose and we'll see each other soon bye